Okay, we're going to have a part two to this video, and in this part we do a little sort of hands-on working with the cap plugs and sockets. Uh, a few times I mentioned Pico, and it's not because I'm particularly enamored with Pico or trying to advertise for them, but uh, they seem to be widely available, it's what I can get. But for example, this fuse socket, which is not Pico, better grip on the fuse than a lot of the Pico made plugs uh, with the Pico pins. And uh, also, people ask me what kind of current this plug system is good for, and I'll only point out that uh, uh, AT fuses come in ratings up to 40 amps. Some pretty hefty wires if you have a plug with that. On. Now, when they're made by the 3D printer, the plugs often have, or always have, little rough bits on them here. And when you put them together, they don't uh, quite go together as well as you might hope. Uh, it's uh, not insurmountable, you can use them that way, but I usually uh, just take a piece of sandpaper on the very edge of the workbench here. Uh, this one goes easy because it's flat. The other one has the bump in the middle, so I do it right at the edge here. And just take off those little burrs. Then when you fit these together, the, uh, the crack in the middle is smaller. And of course, when you go to uh, connect up the Socket. You've got pieces of wire which you strip about a quarter inch or five sixteenths off the end. Uh, then use the uh, Pico connectors. Those are what fit in here, the 0.205 inch size. And I like to crimp these with one side so it's inside the other. Put the wire in first so there's no problem when you go to do that. And just squish that down a bit. And then uh, I got the genuine Pico crimping tool. And I don't really care where we go with this very much as long as it crimps it down. round crimp there. And the same thing with the plus wire. Oh, look, there's one that's already done. So that goes in there. With the flat side out. And this one goes in here which way has the flat side because this side's shallower and this side's deeper. So that goes there. Piece goes together with the two pins in there. And then we use the uh, mode electronics. Uh, that's what I found that was closest to what I wanted. Uh, two millimeter by eight millimeter long screws. and the other side's smaller so it has to thread its way through. And voila, there's a plug with a loop on one end and I have yet to put the loop on this end to go on to some battery terminals in the electric car. And then these, uh, on each battery, you can have a 12 volt charger and uh, a monitoring system that I plan to make that monitors each individual battery. So you have one of these on every second battery to get the, the voltages.
Now when I uh, decided to make these cap plugs based on the AT fuses, ran into a slightly unexpected problem, and that is the, the AT fuse plug blades are 0.25 inch, 0 0.025 inches thick. And you can get sheet metal that's 0 0.025 inches thick, but probably more common are thicker sizes like 0 0.030 and uh, thinner sizes like 0 0.010. Obviously 0 0.010 is going to be loose, but if you take a 0 0.030 and stick it in here, it goes into the socket nice and tight. But then when you try and put a 0.025 in, it's completely loose. Whereas in a regular 0.025 that hasn't been uh, forced to 0.030, you get a good fit. And uh, Pico doesn't make the blades this size. They make the sockets, but not the blades. So you have to make them out of uh, sheet metal or something yourself. And of course, if you make them the right thickness, and someone else has plugged in a thick plug, then it doesn't uh, fit very well. So you would be f faced with uh, taking your socket apart in order to get it to work again, and just squeeze these uh, together a little bit with pliers. That works, but of course that means disassembling your socket. Yeah, well, it works works too well. <laughs> uh, they eventually force that plug in there, whereas one that hasn't been forced open by a thicker one it fits properly. And I, when I designed these plugs, I finally decided that the way to, to make them fit in and not slide in and out of the receptacle was to put a bend in them. Bends a little small here. And I made this tool called a cat plug pin folding tool. And you put a piece in the slot and fold it like that. I guess that could be better demonstrated with a new piece rather than an old piece. Uh, something I found for this for these pins is uh, just recently is a flat piece of wire and uh, I confess I put it through a jeweler's rolling mill to make it 0.025 inches uh, which uh, is probably going to be pretty tricky for most people. You can do it with a hammer though if you've got 0 0.030 you can just tap it and tap it and and, uh, and of course a micrometer until, until you're reading down around uh, 0.025 instead of 0 0.030 so these pins, uh, oh, sorry, Pico crimping tool here. So I'm actually hoping someone sooner or later comes out with something better than these. <laughs> There's obviously different ways to implement some socket that would hold the pin of the correct dimensions. So there we've got that's how they're held in. And the one for the negative goes over this bump here, which there's a corresponding recess to in here. So it goes like that. And, and that, the bump goes over the pin. Theoretically, it doesn't slide in and out. <laughs> Helps to have the wire on it, of course, and you can do an, a second bend over that bump. I usually go about like something like that, and uh, that gives you a place to drill a little hole for the wire. I prefer to, to drill a hole than to just solder the wire onto the flat get a better mechanical bond going through the hole. So, 
där in vice Is aim reasonably well. Here it's just, I'm just going to use a Dremel tool with a 1 16th inch drill bit to make a hole. So finally, we've got our uh, wires, pigtail wires with pins on them. This goes in here, and this goes crossways in here. So the click lock plug and click lock socket, cat standard, and put them together. And there they are. So using it in a mobile situation, they you can actually pull up them apart if you try, but they're not going to vibrate out because the arms won't uh, keep holding it in. And the official way to get it out is to push these so that these spread and come out of the plug. And it is actually a lot easier to pull it out. Now to make up a plate of cat sockets is pretty simple because you just take the very same cat sockets that you used for bone wires and put them in the uh, holes here so that the holes line up. That's uh, with no screw in it. Which of course, it's falling apart here. But once it's in, the uh, shell holds it together. And you slip through a pin or a piece of wire. And presto! with two sockets in it. Of course you could make plates with uh, more sockets in it, half a dozen, maybe nine, and, uh, and of course you have to wire them all, but you wouldn't need a power adapter. I mean a power bar. And it's pretty much the same thing for these ones with the pins oriented, the sockets oriented vertically, except that you need two little short pieces. Them. So here's a uh, plug in the kitchen wall that goes to my Peltier Element refrigerator. And here's some of the click lock plugs and sockets in an electric car. So there it is, not so different from wiring up various sorts of plugs and sockets. 